in a world where Hunger Games meets Fortnite. Sticking out your gap for the Rizzler. You're so skibbity. One man and his abs will do something. Uh, play the punchy clips with the music. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the first time you're hearing about this movie's existence. I mean, hell, the only way I knew about this movie is because I was actively looking for movies coming out online. And I can't believe we got two standalone action movies so far this year, and it's only April. Holy moly, it must be my birthday. Obviously, from this trailer, this movie was going to be stupid. But with the promise of fun and mind-numbing action and spectacle, I put on my Sunday best and went to see Boy Kills World. And it was I Clearly, this movie was never going to be anyone's Citizen Kane. But the real question was, did it make good on its promise of kooky, violent fun? And for the most part, yeah, I think it did. It's a little hit and miss. When it hits, it hits. Unfortunately, when it misses, it really misses. So for my highbrow movie critic score, I gotta give it a 5 out of 10. And for my schmo score, the rating for the average Joe Schmo, I give it a 7 out of 10. Now this is the part where I explain my rating, so if you want to see Boy Kills World spoiler free, this is where we part ways. Thanks for being here and I hope you have a wonderful day. The best way I can describe this movie is it's like a D-list video game where at first the cutscenes serve a purpose of vaguely explaining what's going on and why we're here but as the game goes on they make less and less sense to the point where you just want to skip all the cutscenes to get to the action parts. You should skip video game cutscenes. That's what this movie is. A D-list video game made into a movie. And it has great action scenes with crazy excessive camera work and spectacle with over-the-top fun characters that could never really exist outside of a game. Like there's one character that has a Daft Punk-like helmet that projects her thoughts and feelings. Why would you do all that? Because it's cool. And the gore, so much gore. Remember when Evil Dead Rise came out and people were like, I'll never look at a cheese grater the same way again. Well, wait till you see what they do with the cheese grater in this movie. <laughs> there were genuinely some fun ideas and some great comedic moments, like the main character being deaf and having to read people's lips, but not being able to understand people who mumble their words. <laughs> <laughs> more, more Pokemon. Probably not saying that. Maybe if I concentrate, I can pick up our briefcase. Uh, something about pickles. Snickle boom top top. Are these words? I don't. Dodo bun for turn to bird. Dodo bun sound fun. There were a couple of really good ideas and scenes here. The problem was they didn't come up with a way to link them all together very well. So, like I said, I found myself halfway through the movie wanting to skip the in-between cutscenes since they really weren't making any sense anyways. I just wanted to get to the next battle arena or the next boss fight. They really should have wrote a better overarching narrative to connect these cool scenes together. But if you're not going to do that, then you have to go full spectacle, no cutscenes. So in the end, do I recommend this movie to the average Joe? Sure. It has its moments. It's fun. It has cool fight scenes. Do I think it needs to be seen in the movie theaters? No. But... That's really your prerogative to decide. Anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate you, and I'll catch you on the next one.